I've been attempting to protect our environment even from about 12 years old. When, when I played baseball in my hometown, we live along, we lived along ditches and along agricultural areas and we'd find all kinds of birds and bugs and and we found a lot of amazing nature that lived right next to us. We had almost every house had a ditch running through their yard. It was an agriculturally focused community at that time, not anymore. So there was a lot of nature around. And I just loved those little creatures. And so I protected them. And even when we were playing baseball or football or riding bikes around. After having looked at them really close with magnifying lenses and, and seeing their personalities, I, when I was young, I thought I could see the personalities in the various creatures and how they were enjoying their days, so to speak, and watched their own battle with life, you know, adapting with relationships, other beings that they either had to eat or or mate with and and as a kid I didn't have a lot of friends I had some a few good friends but I always felt a bit lonely feeling that people didn't really understand me really well even though I had friends I could talk to and by looking at nature I I felt sometimes the aloneness that some of the creatures might experience some of the loner animals and and then the togetherness and and kind of saw the reflection of humanity in the ecology around us. You know, even like the asparagus, I could see that as like little trees where the creatures that live among those look up at those and see them as the little trees. And so I tried to protect the praying mantises, keeping people from tearing the eggs off or being careful when we were playing baseball not to step on sensitive areas or places where the frogs were living. And so that started out some of my concern for the environment, as well as there were some folks who weren't totally healthy and somewhat overweight. And there was a lot of some dietary habits that they had that weren't that healthy and heart attacks and smoking. And the cows weren't too happy in some places. And so I was also concerned about the quality of life of the animals that we were eating, the quality of life that they had. Seeing some of the chickens in the very small coops, even when they weren't in commercial situations, just too crowded. And considering their plight, relating it a bit to our plight. So from pretty young on, I was looking for the parallels in nature's societies compared to ours, wanting to protect theirs and wanted to protect my own family. And so when I was 12, I was attempting to invent a bean burger so that we could eat less cows, so that we wouldn't have to hurt the cows as much. Um, and designing pictures, drawing pictures of people being kind to nature and gardening and such. I wasn't much of an activist, but uh, working on it a bit from when I was young. There was also some mining around the area and some cases of cancer due to the atomic energy's use of uranium in the area. So from early on, concerned about the impact of that we have on nature and nature's enjoyment and that we have on ourselves and how well we get to enjoy life as a trade-off of this consumeristic society. Any cell can sense pain, pressure, movement, and heat. So to me, even any cell can hear the beetles, so to speak, for input. And so pretty early on, I thought, you know, even these smallest of beings are appreciating their life in some way. Um, sometimes when I've been hurt and all I can feel is pain and maybe pressure from 
a rock being on me, like when I fell and was climbing. There was this pain, pressure, movement, and heat. Very, very primitive. And I was in so much pain that there was really no intellectual, didn't seem to be intellectual thought that I could have. It was just all these impulses that seemed so primitive. Pain, pressure, movement, and heat. And in the hot sun, and I thought, wow, this is, I feel like a single cell. Everything else is wiped out. Just pain, pressure, movement, and heat. And then I realized why every cell can sense at least pain, pressure, movement, and heat. And the variation in four simple, four channels is so infinite. It's not infinite, but it's, there's a lot of variation that can happen in four inputs. And for that reason, I've fought even harder for a biosphere, not only just for the humans, for I believe that humans are the apex to a degree of fun, enjoying organisms. But I think that a lot of those other beings are enjoying life too, in their own way. So that's been part of the motivation is to maximize the fun without hurting as many as possible, knowing that we're always going to take some down. You know, it's a cost-benefit situation, but, you know, we're going to take something down. We're going to have more fun because we're going to step on stuff. But it's how much we take and how much we hurt that makes a difference for the amount of enjoyment we, ha we have. And in some cases, we take far too much for the little amount of fun that we get for the amount of resources in life that is actually pained and killed and lost because of our actions.